Mevlu, my friend, thank you very, very much. Um, uh, this has been an important uh, opportunity to visit our Turkish allies and friends in a moment of real need and to bring a clear message from President Biden and from the American people. The United States is here to support you in your time of need, and we will be by your side for as long as it takes to recover and to rebuild. Um, yesterday, as my first stop on this trip, uh, I visited Interlik uh, Air Base, which, as you know, is the hub of the United States' efforts to support the disaster response. Uh, with the foreign minister, with Mevlut, I had the opportunity to fly over uh, Hatay province to look at some of the devastation firsthand. And as I said yesterday, it's, it's hard to put into words. Countless buildings, communities, streets, damaged or fully destroyed. Uh, I met with a number of the responders, uh, U.S. military officials, um, our team from the U.S. Agency for International Development, members of the incredible uh, American Disaster Assistance Response Team, search and rescue teams from Los Angeles on one coast to Fairfax County, Virginia on the other, uh, where I live, uh, our White Helmet partners in Syria. All of them have seen the staggering toll of this catastrophe. All of them are committed to being there for our friends in this moment. Um, we began uh, our own assistance to the uh, rescue and relief efforts within hours of the first quake, when President Biden directed the heads of our federal agencies to rapidly mobilize to assist the government of Turkey and our humanitarian response partners in Syria. Uh, we have sent hundreds of U.S. government personnel to the region, uh, including the disaster assistance response and search and rescue teams, uh, and also emergency managers, paramedics, hazardous materials technicians, and engineers. We've sent approximately 1.8 million pounds of relief supplies for survivors, shelter, uh, kitchen sets, blankets, hygiene kits, and more. And more is on the way. Uh, we're continuing to announce additional assistance, new funding to support these efforts. Yesterday I announced an additional $100 million from the United States on top of the $85 million we've already provided. Um, the American people, communities and businesses, as Mevlut said, have seen the heartbreaking images and they have been standing up too. We have nearly $80 million in donations from the private sector in the United States, individuals. When I visited the Turkish Embassy in Washington, I almost couldn't get in the front door because boxes were piled high uh, throughout the, uh, the driveway to the embassy. Now, Turkey faces a long road ahead to support those rendered homeless and to rebuild. The UN Secretary General has put out uh, a very important, urgent appeal for $1 billion for long-term assistance, and we're committed to providing support. Uh, just as allies and partners show up for each other in our darkest hours, we also stand side by side in confronting common security challenges. And that's certainly been true in our response to Russia's aggression against Ukraine. Turkey's clear voice in support of Ukraine's sovereignty and territorial integrity has been critical. Its diplomatic leadership, the foreign minister's personal role in brokering the UN Black Sea Grain Initiative, has been critical uh, and critical to making sure that food and food products could get to people in need around the world, um, including many people in low-income countries. Its continued implementation of the Montreux Convention deterred naval escalation in the Black Sea and helped protect Ukraine's coastline. Turkey's humanitarian and economic support for Ukraine, providing initial safe haven for hundreds of thousands of Ukrainians fleeing the Russian onslaught, supplying hundreds of generators for cities amid blackouts as Russia continues to attack the electricity grid, that has saved lives in Ukraine. And its position as a key energy transit hub has bolstered energy security, bringing alternative natural gas supplies, international LNG, as well as Caspian Sea gas uh, to Europe. The United States greatly values Turkey's contributions as a long-standing and active member of the NATO alliance, and we'll keep working together to strengthen and grow our alliance, including through the accession of Sweden and Finland, which will help deliver even stronger and more capable uh, assets to the alliance. Uh, Turkey and the United States are also partnering to fight global terrorism and to advance peace in the Balkans and the Caucasus and other global hotspots. We very much appreciate the positive steps that uh, Turkey is taking to improve relations with Greece, with Armenia, uh, with Israel, whose citizens, by the way, have been working side by side uh, with uh, their uh, colleagues from Turkey in response to the earthquake. And we're committed to maintaining our very close defense cooperation, including by ensuring that Turkey remains a highly capable air power contributor 
within the NATO alliance. We're focused on expanding the robust trade, investment, and economic cooperation between our countries. As Mevlut said, uh, we've had a very good year last year. Trade exceeded a record $30 billion. We're eager to build on that foundation to pursue new opportunities, particularly in the renewable sector. Turkey has invested over $16 billion in renewables over the last five years and is pursuing ambitious goals to increase capacity over the next five years. We look forward to setting up a climate and energy dialogue to accelerate these efforts while also creating jobs and inclusive economic growth for both of our countries. Beyond these shared interests, the United States and Turkey uh, have a relationship that is built on shared values, values of democracy, respect for basic universal freedoms, for human rights. And today we had an opportunity to discuss those principles, as we always do in our conversations. And like all good friends, the United States and Turkey do not agree on every issue, but like good friends, ours is a partnership that has withstood extraordinary change and some significant challenges and will continue to do so, particularly because we're able to speak so directly uh, and candidly to each other. Uh, later today, I'll have the privilege of uh, visiting the uh, Ani Kabir, uh, the resting place of the founder of the Turkish Republic. In the heart of our own capital stands a monument to one of our own great independence leaders and founders, George Washington. Uh, 170 years ago, when the Washington Monument was being constructed, uh, Sultan uh, Abu Majid sent a marble plaque uh, to be placed on the obelisk. And the words on that stone uh, were inscribed by the same calligrapher whose work places the Hagia Sophia. His message can still be made out 170 years later in support of eternal friendship. Today, that commitment not only endures, but continues to grow and to flourish as I'm convinced it will for generations. Ecem Toplar, Bengi Türk Televizyonu. Sorun Ecem Toplar, from Bengi Türk TV. This is going to be sözlerine de geçirdi ifade etti. Çavuşoğlu, savaş uçaklarının Türkiye'ye satışı konusunda ABD yönetiminin güçlü destek verdiğine değindi. Ancak Kongre'deki süreç belirsiz. Kongre'ye Biden. And uh, in addition to this, uh, for uh, Turkey, there is one uh, billion uh, payment that has been made for F-35. What is the last situation and the status quo on this payment? Uh, thank you very much for the question. Um, with regard to the uh, F-16s, uh, the Biden administration strongly supports the package to both upgrade the existing F-16s and to provide new ones to Turkey because uh, as a NATO ally and partner, it is in uh, our national interest and the security uh, interest of the alliance that Turkey uh, continue to be able to operate at the higher standards uh, of, of NATO uh, to make sure that we have full interoperability. Um, on this uh, particular uh, matter, I can't offer you an assessment or get into the process until after we formally uh, notify uh, our Congress, uh, but it's something that we we're working on and we've made very clear to Congress our strong support for the, uh, the F-16 modernization. Um, we have long-standing defense and security ties, uh, and as the President has said, as President Biden has said, Turkish NATO interoperability remains a priority for us. Çok Thank you very much. As I mentioned during my remarks, uh, we uh, clearly stated our expectations pertaining to the F-16. There is a will on the U.S. administration side, and we are aware of certain letters that have been written by uh, some uh, circles and some senators. Uh, on one hand, we are working on uh, the set in terms of delegations, technical delegations, and if the U.S. administration uh, has a firm stance, and if we work together, we believe that we can overcome uh, this uh, resistance that might exist. Uh, these are two uh, independent issues, especially pertaining uh, to uh, 
to uh, states becoming full member to NATO uh, to be the precondition of the, the purchase of F-16. These are uh, not related issues. Uh, they are different negotiations for both uh, sides. There is an MOU that has been signed, uh, a, a, tri a trilateral un uh, MOU. So it will not be correct to put this as a precondition. Or, uh, of course, it will not be possible for us to purchase F-16 with certain conditions. Our hands should not be tied. So we should have a common stance as uh, the uh, administration of Turkey and administration of U.S. This is critical. Uh, on the issue of the F-35, uh, we were uh, a partner uh, to the F-35. Uh, and because of uh, the uh, uh, cuts, uh, sanctions, Turkey was uh, taken out of this partnership. This was a unilateral decision. It wasn't our decision. There is a payment that we have made, $1.4 billion. And if Turkey is not in the program, of course, uh, expecting that this uh, money is to be paid uh, back to us is uh, only natural. And negotiations are continuing on this. On 18th of January, when we met with my counterpart in Washington, D.C., uh, the experts also discussed the issue of F-35 uh, on the same day. And of course, it will be beneficial to reach a conclusion uh, to this ASAP. Thank you. Reuters to Mayor Apamuk. Thank you, Reuters to Mayor Apamuk. Mr. Minister, the uh, relations between Turkey and U.S. have uh, been uh, continuing neg in a negative way. And uh, there are differences of opinions. Uh, the F-16s, Sweden and Finland, uh, also on the issue of earthquake. You have indicated that there is strong solidarity. Do you believe uh, that this tragedy that we experienced will uh, be an occasion for a new page in the relations between the two countries? And uh, NATO countries and uh, U.S. Uh, are expecting Tur Turkey to ratify the membership application of both Sweden and Finland before the Vilnius summit. Will Turkey uh, be able to meet this requirement? Ties between your two countries have been in a bad place. You yourself described Turkey in your confirmation hearing two years ago as a so-called ally. But I wonder if the experience of the earthquake has created an opportunity for a reset between the two countries. Um, and the follow-up to my colleague's question on the F-16, you just said you can't assess a timeline for the formal notification. What exactly is the United States waiting for? Are you waiting for Turkey to approve the Nordic expansion? And what will you do to convince the U.S. Congress to be on board? Thank you. Thank you very much. Of course, the solidarity that has been extended during difficult times uh, always uh, have a positive effect on relations, and it contributes to those relations. We might have differences of opinions with the United States of America, and uh, these issues are uh, clear. But the positive agenda and focusing on the positive agenda, and there is also a will to develop uh, our relations uh, further. Therefore, uh, during uh, the meeting in Rome, uh, President Biden and President Erdogan discussed the establishment of the strategic mechanism. The aim behind this, as I have mentioned, uh, the philosophy behind uh, this is to focus on the positive agenda and develop relations on a bilateral basis in different platforms and increase cooperation in regional and uh, global issues. The second aim is actually to discuss uh, the existing problems and uh, discuss how these problems could be resolved and take steps uh, accordingly. In this direction, both at expert level and at uh, the ministerial level, we met twice. And I do believe that such meetings have been very beneficial. When the Foreign Minister of Greece uh, visited our country, uh, as I said uh, during the uh, press meeting, for developing relations or for resolving uh, existing problems, we should not uh, wait for a disaster to take place, and we should take sincere and concrete steps in uh, this direction. The membership of Sweden and Finland 
uh, if you follow uh, the uh, declarations on our side, uh, and I do know that the U.S. is uh, following these closely, we have a trilateral memorandum of understanding between these three countries. And it's very clear as to what steps needed uh, to be taken by which side. Relatively, our problems with Finland are less. So the calendar that you have shared with respect to the NATO summit in Vilnius. These are tied in relation to the steps that are to be taken by Sweden. There have been some positive messages. There have been legislative amendments and constitutional amendments undertaken by the Swedish side. But unfortunately, the PKK supporters and also in relation to financing of terrorism and uh, recruits for terrorism, as well as the terrorist propaganda, all activities are continuing. And uh, these are taking place in the center of uh, uh, Stockholm, in front of the uh, city building. And uh, they are trying to eliminate Sweden's uh, membership to NATO. But of course, it's uh, up to Sweden to take relevant measures to eliminate such activities. We saw the sincere effort of the Prime Minister, and he also had an opportunity to see the stance of all political parties in our parliament. This is just, uh, this isn't just a matter of uh, the government's position. So the faster and the better the Swedish side takes the steps, if they take steps that will convince our parliament and our people, then we will take uh, the relevant uh, steps as well. Uh, of course, so on the issue of Finland, we have indicated that there could be a different methodology uh, followed. Uh, this was a message that our president shared with the Secretary General of NATO last week. Here, we uh, are especially waiting for the Swedish side to take concrete steps, and everybody should support Sweden to take these concrete steps. Thank you. Uh, Mira, thank you. Um, I don't share the premise of the question about uh, the nature of our uh, or status of our relationship. As I laid out in my opening statement, uh, Turkey and the United States are working closely together across multiple fronts, uh, whether it's in our own bilateral relationship, uh, whether it's in the region, uh, Europe more broadly, or for that matter, around the world. And it's a partnership that we greatly value. With regard to the uh, F-16s, um, I can't give you a timeline on formal notification. What I can tell you is I've already been actively uh, engaged in speaking to Congress about the administration's strong support for uh, the uh, F-16 package, the, uh, the upgrade modernization package. Uh, and. Um, I have shared, uh, again, our view that this is uh, very important for uh, ongoing NATO interoperability uh, and in the uh, national security interest of, uh, of the United States. Uh, the matter of uh, Finland and Sweden's accession to NATO is not a bilateral issue. Um, of course, as you know well, we strongly support their admission as quickly as possible. Um, both. Uh, are members already of NATO's Partnership for Peace, NATO's Enhanced Opportunity Partnership. Their militaries work seamlessly with the rest of the alliance. Uh, we're confident that NATO will formally welcome them in uh, soon. And uh, when that happens, it will enhance the security of every NATO member, including the United States, including Turkey. Um, Finland and Sweden have already taken concrete steps to fulfill the commitments that they made under the trilateral memorandum of agreement uh, that they signed with Turkey on the margins of the NATO summit in Madrid. Uh, we welcome and appreciate those steps. I think they're quite significant. Thank you very much, Emir Kaleja from Hobar Global. My question is to Secretary of State Blinken, and I would also like to ask Minister Cevusholu to comment on my question. I'm going to be focusing on Syria in relation to border security and the PKK YPG presence in Syria. There are certain worries, and there have been some agreements surrendered with the United States of America, and Turkey has indicated that expectations have not been met. Uh, likewise, in relation to cooperation of USA with PKKYBG, there are some worries as well. Was this issue raised during uh, your deliberations? And uh, what is the US side going to take uh, in terms of steps uh, to overcome uh, the reservations of Turkey? Uh, thank you very much for the question. Uh, yes, we did discuss this. And uh, as uh, we've said um, in the past and as I reiterated today, 
we very much recognize Turkey's uh, legitimate con uh, security concerns about its southern border, just as I believe Turkey recognizes our legitimate and indeed shared security concerns about Daesh uh, and the possibility of its uh, reemergence. Uh, we will continue to work closely together to address both of uh, those concerns. Um, in the immediate moment, of course, we're both very much focused on humanitarian assistance to the people of Syria, uh, who, like the people of Turkey, have suffered terribly uh, from the earthquake. And we're working together to maximize the support that can get to them. Um, as you know, uh, there has been only one official border crossing um, recognized under a UN Security Council resolution for purposes of the UN providing assistance. Uh, that's deeply unfortunate uh, because as a result of repeated Russian efforts over the years, the number of crossings has been reduced from four to one. Uh, we now have uh, information that uh, the uh, Assad regime will allow access through two other uh, border crossings. Uh, we'll see what actually materializes in practice. But everything else aside, it is vitally important that all of us do everything we possibly can to maximize support to the people of Syria, just as we're maximizing support to the people of Turkey to deal with uh, the horrific effects of the earthquake. By the way, the United States over the last decade or so since the outbreak of the war in Syria has been the leading humanitarian provider to people in Syria, $15 billion. We do that through uh, NGO partners. Uh, it's vitally important that they be able to do their work freely, safely, uh, securely. Um, this is about the most basic needs of people who are in distress, and I hope we can all work together to meet those needs. Thank you very much. You asked me to comment on this uh, question as well. Uh, whether it's Daesh or uh, any other terrorist organization, uh, we believe that cooperating with one terrorist organization to fight with another terrorist organization is a fatal mistake. This is something that we repeatedly uh, indicate. Therefore, uh, the allegation that PKK YPG is fighting against Daesh, we have always proven that this allegation is not correct. We, uh, as strong NATO allies, should be fighting all terrorist organizations, whatever the ideology, whatever the aim, or whatever the target might be. We need to fight against them together. If there is political will, we also have uh, the capacity to fight together as uh, Turkey and the uh, USA. There are two threats for NATO today. The first threat is Russian Federation, and the second threat is terrorism. Therefore, as NATO allies, if we cannot uh, fight the, uh, on our own, and if we have to cooperate with a terrorist organization like PKK YPG, which is an enemy uh, to our state, that is not uh, correct. Uh, in the relation to Syria, there have been some uh, agreements uh, with uh, the American side. One is the Minbich roadmap, and this uh, other one is uh, the joint declaration that was uh, undertaken in Ankara. In relation to this uh, joint declaration, uh, especially within uh, the 30 kilometer uh, deadline of our border, uh, for this was uh, going to be an area that is cleansed of uh, terrorist activity, and uh, they would be sent to, to the south. But as I have said uh, during um, our meeting in Washington, D.C., we did not see a concrete step. Therefore, we believe that we should fight against any type of terrorism altogether, and we should implement the agreements uh, that we have uh, striking. This is uh, an earthquake, uh, and it is a, a civil issue, a humanitarian issue. This is also the uh, U.S. administration uh, position. So assisting the civilians that have been affected by uh, the earthquake uh, in uh, Syria is our uh, task and duty. Some international organizations and some countries, when they're providing humanitarian assistance to us, they asked us to deliver uh, some part of uh, this assistance to Syria. And this is how the United Nations is delivering humanitarian assistance. It's our humanitarian an obligation to deliver this the Jilvegu uh, Zubabul Hava border gate. In addition to this, uh, currently there is another border gate in Kilis which is open 
and uh, these uh, border gates we have indicated uh, that are uh, to be used for the United Nations site. The United Nations uh, approved of this decision, although it's not in the Security Council decision because it's a humanitarian situation. And uh, some trucks uh, passed through this border gate to deliver humanitarian assistance to the Appen zone. So humanitarian issues are separated from political issues. Our cooperation on humanitarian assistance shall uh, continue, and they would like to thank you for the cooperation rendered. Thank you so much. Michael Crowley with the New York Times. Uh, question for each of you. Uh, Secretary Blinken, you've been saying in recent days that China will face serious consequences if it supplies lethal aid to Russia to aid its war in Ukraine. Uh, what might that entail? Are you suggesting there could be U.S. sanctions? And do you believe that other nations would also take steps to punish such an action by China? Uh, separately, I wonder if you could comment on a report that the IAEA has found nuclear material enriched to 84% in Iran. Do you believe this is true? And if so, what steps might the U.S. take in response? Uh, Mr. Minister, uh, U.S. officials have been frustrated to see a boom in trade between Turkey and Russia in recent months, uh, specifically including reportedly uh, technology items that are subject to export bans and could be aiding Russia's war machine. Did you discuss this subject with the Secretary today, and what is your response to these complaints? Thank you both. <clears throat> Michael, thank you. Um, with regard to, uh, uh, to China and uh, Russia, as, um, as I said the other day, and as um, other colleagues in the administration have said, uh, we are uh, concerned that uh, China is considering uh, uh, supporting Russia's war effort in Ukraine with lethal assistance, something that we're watching uh, very, very closely. As I also said, uh, and as President Biden said, going back many months when the aggression first took place and he spoke to President uh, Xi Jinping, uh, he told him at that point that um, there would be real uh, consequences in our own relationship were China to provide lethal assistance to um, Russia in this uh, aggression against Ukraine, or uh, in a systematic way aid in the evasion of, uh, of sanctions. Uh, and as I said, we have uh, a real concern that China is considering uh, doing just that. I'm not going to lay out what the, uh, uh, what the consequences would be. I shared um, these concerns directly with the senior Chinese foreign policy official Wang Yi when I saw him at the uh, Munich Security Conference uh, just uh, the other day. Uh, but I think China uh, understands uh, what's, uh, what's at risk were to proceed with providing material support of that kind to, uh, to Russia. Uh, I also know from conversations with many other countries, including in Munich, um, that many other countries uh, would take um, very seriously the provision of such support by uh, China to Russia. And this would be a real problem for China in its relationships with many other countries, not just the United States. So we hope and expect that they will forbear for, from uh, going down that road. Uh, with regard to uh, the reports of uh, Iranian enrichment, yes, I've seen those reports. We are in uh, close contact with the IEA as well as with our partners, uh, the E3 partners uh, in Europe. Uh, we're working to get more information, uh, and uh, when we do, um, I'll have more to say. Uh, but, of course, it, this would be a very serious matter. In the pre-war period, as well as uh, after the war was initiated, Turkey has exhibited a very clear and principled approach. On one hand, we are condemning the war, and as my counterpart has indi indicated, we are strongly supporting the territorial integrity of Ukraine. We are also uh, condemning uh, and uh, not recognizing the results of the illegal referendum and uh, the uh, annexation of territory. Also, in international platforms, we take uh, common and joint decisions. In the end, Turkey's position is very clear, and uh, we are rigidly implementing the Montreux uh, Convention. We are even surpassing that, and uh, we are activating diplomatic channels, uh, discussing this with uh, the Russian Federation, as well as with our uh, to allies. 
and we do not bypass uh, the convention at all. We have not allowed any uh, war uh, or military vessel uh, to trespass uh, through our uh, straits. But on the other hand, uh, Turkey is not taking part in these sanctions. We do not take part in the unilateral sanctions. We do abide by the United Nations decisions uh, clearly. And uh, during uh, our meeting, we also discussed how we can cooperate in these areas in relation to the financing of uh, terrorism, etc. So when we're fighting against terrorism, we need to actually fight against all aspects of terrorism, including its ideology. On the other hand, uh, for the sanctions imposed by the uh, US and uh, the EU, we have indicated from the very beginning that we're not going to allow any bypassing of these sanctions through our country, and we do not allow this to take place. The uh, Deputy uh, Treasury Secretary uh, came uh, to uh, Turkey. Our colleagues uh, sat down and discussed this. So we are also receiving information from EU, and uh, when necessary, we uh, assess this in our cabinet meeting. There was some uh, information that we received from the US side, and we uh, did not believe uh, they, they were correct or they were exaggerated, but yet again, we took certain uh, measures. So uh, the uh, products uh, coming from uh, EU not to be re-exported through our country, we are taking all relevant measures. You need to act uh, with a principal approach. Our bilateral uh, trade volume uh, with the Russian Federation increased, but more than 60% of this is actually gas and energy that we purchased uh, from the Russian Federation. And unfortunately, because of the war, the gas prices tripled. So the uh, trade gap increased. In our export, our export also increased in relation to some uh, food products and other products, but it is not uh, like electronic uh, products or technological products that will be used in the defense industry. And it's not correct that we export such products to the Russian Federation. To our American colleagues as well as uh, to our colleagues from EU, we indicated that if they have any information or any documentation, they should share this with us. And if there is any violation, whatsoever, we will take the relevant measure because our stance is very clear. Thank you.